Hi, this is Andy Mooney, CEO of Fender, and we are in the lobby of Fender's Los Angeles headquarters, and you are watching Loudwire. My father was a, uh, was a committed uh, piano player, and he really encouraged me to learn an instrument, and in my case it was guitar. So I learned a classical Spanish guitar when I was in high school, uh, sorry, grade school, and then kind of migrated to electric guitar. And he bought me my first um, record player and gave me money to buy my first two uh, singles which is kind of amazing to think of now is that the two singles that were in the UK pop chart simultaneously were Black Knight from Deep Purple and Paranoid from Black Sabbath. And then of course, you know, you always had to do I mean, every kid had to do uh, Paranoid when they, when they were in high school. So this is a Richie, Richie Blackmore signature. Um, one of the things that he always did for some reason was he basically took out the middle pickup. Um, originally, he just lowered it. And uh, he, he, ju he just he had this unbelievably moving back and forth quickly between the, the bridge, the pickup, ch change tone in the middle of songs very, very dramatically. The other uh, kind of band I was really into and guitar player I was really into um, uh, in high school, and this was a case where I did get to see the band, uh, David Bowie, uh, in his multiple personas. So I originally saw Ziggy Stardust, saw him during the Aladdin Sane, Sane years. And of course, Mick Ronson was you know, unbelievably, unbelievably gifted as a, a guitar player. <laughs> And yeah, you know, there's so many riffs that you could do from Bowie from or of course This is the American Ultra uh, Telecaster. This is really our top of the line uh, guitar that we re recently introduced. We only introduced this in the last quarter of last year. This is the most popular color of this guitar, which we call, is called Texas T, which um, I guess has essentially become the new black. Uh, this is probably uh, one of the more innovative guitars that the company has ever produced. It's a guitar called the Acoustic Sonic. So normally, you know, when an acoustic guitar player goes on stage, the guitar is electrified. What you usually get is one great acoustic sound louder. Um, what we did in this case is, is said, let's use the five-way switch and we'll incorporate 10 different acoustic sounds uh, on stage and then give you the ability through this blending uh, control it's just volume and blending control. Say you can go all the way from, you can go back to, to uh, Kurt Cobain's um, interpretation of David Bowie. I mean again, how, how simple an opening riff can you get than, than that? But if you, know, if you wanted to go from that to, to Cracked Actor, It was really meant at that time to compete with a lot of the strat light objects that had that uh, were were kind of super strats as they were called back then. That featured um, Floyd Rose, of course, lo locking locking head, uh, and the ability here to kind of go from a humbucker to and splitting it into single coils. <laughs> How can you get any simpler for that? And it's very close to the, to 
the, to the, the, the verse underpinning for Black Knight. Same, essentially same notes. <laughs> Exact same note pattern is coming out of Black Knight. So that again, that fairly narrow band of of, uh, of scale, basic pentatonic blues blues scale. Um, it's the it's the foundation for some of the greatest riffs of all time, and very easy for a young player, any player, to kind of get into the song for the first time. So this is a custom shop uh, variation of Eric Clapton's Brownie. Um, there were only a hundred of these made, uh, but we built one uh, additional for our own, um, our own collection. This is it. Um, so, you know, you can't possibly uh, have this guitar without going. <laughs> Again, classic, very simple, uh, simple line, but in the hands of Eric Clapton, it's, um, uh, it's uh, immortal. I, uh, I got this guitar, uh, as you can tell, it's, uh, it's, if you were a right-handed player, um, and all your only option that you had was playing a left-handed guitar, which is kind of the inverse of what uh, Jimmy had to do, Jimi Hendrix had to do, this is the experience that you'd have. And I, I have to say, it's tough. <laughs> it's not, it's not a, it doesn't even really sit in your lap um, you know, that, that easily. What can you say about Jimi Hendrix? How he was able to do what he did, playing a, gu a guitar in this manifestation, <laughs> uh, you know, limited access to the upper the upper frets because the heel's upside down, tremolo bar all over the you know completely over the place, having to reach over the controls uh, to do some of the solo work that he's doing. It's just it's just a miracle. <laughs> I have a 13 year old daughter. A couple of years back now, maybe 18 months ago, I went to the annual fundraiser for her school and uh, lo and behold, there's a, a Tom Morello guitar there, signed by Tom, um, up for auction. And along with it was uh, an, an hour's lesson from Tom. So there was no way I was not going to get outbid on that. Was, you know, he, he was you know, very gracious all the way along the line. And at the end of the session, he said to me, he said, well, what's that? What are you playing? And I, I told Chris Shifflett's signature guitar. He goes, oh, you do signature guitars? I go, yeah. I said, we don't do that many. Um, and he goes, well, would you do mine? <laughs> I, I'm going, are you serious? You want, you want us? He said, yeah. He said, I'd like to do um, them all because they're my guitars. Um, and he said, beginning with soul power, because that really was an audio slave guitar, and you know, I, I've moved on from, from there. Um, and I'm, I'm like, of course. <laughs> One of the fun stories that uh, Tom told me during the session because I was asking him about what was the what was the the writing experience. How was it different from Rage um, in compared to Audio Slave? And you know, he said in the case of Rage, very strong personalities in the band, a lot, lot of tension in the story in the songwriting process, but great result. He said with Chris, Chris kind of had came into the band uh, and he'd already done a lot of writing, and, and he was. He was kind of grateful for the opportunity to let Tom and the rest of the guys take the lead, and he would just come in and do his thing. And of course, his thing was, you know, all, you know, always, always remarkable. But what Tom said to me is, he, he said, "I write a lot of the songs on a nylon-strung acoustic guitar I've had for years." He said, including some of the riffs from songs like, you know, Cochise. And he goes, "When I get the riff right on my nylon-strung acoustic guitar." 
I, I know how it's going to translate to electric guitar, and I can see the audience jumping up and down at Wembley Stadium. <laughs> well, you see, it's pretty remarkable that you can think all the way through from sitting in, you know, sitting in your studio or sitting in your bedroom and chugging away on a nylon strung acoustic guitar to this is really going to work when I've got 20, 30,000 people in a stadium. So this is a duosonic, but it's pure mahogany, start to finish. And our pickup designer, Tim Shaw, who's, who's done some of the greatest pickups in the industry, uh, I asked him to put, um, the way that he described it is, he said, I'm gonna give you extra spicy pickups. <laughs> and he said, I think the combination of mahogany with these extra, extra spicy pickups will kind of, you know, will give you exactly what you need. I kind of drop tuning. You know, so if you wanted to do a. This, I say, this is a one off that was just kind of a personal wish list of things that I wanted, I wanted in a guitar, something that would really grow feedback from the moment that you plugged it in. Now we're in drop A. This is a uh, Jim Root signature model. Um, uh, this he has played a, played a Telecaster before uh, and a Jazzmaster, but this this year it's a Jazzmaster. This guitar comes out in uh, uh, April of this year. Because of what he wears on stage with the mask, uh, with the boiler suit, um, and how energetic the performance is and lights and everything else, what he found was the band sweat so much that they were shorting out the guitars. <laughs> um, so what, and he said, hey, I don't, I don't want anything to interrupt the show. So he stripped the guitar down to its absolute essence. Three-way selector switch, uh, his signature Seymour Duncans, uh, sorry, EMGs, uh, and a volume. No tone, no nothing. <laughs> What's not to like about that type of riff?